Start with Tim Bontemps. Hey, Brad, uh, just two things quick. I was curious first if um, you had everybody available as far as uh, testing goes in terms of uh, getting back in after the weekend. And then also did, uh, I know we know Marcus practiced, how much was Romeo able to do and what is the timetable on his uh, return to the court for you guys? Everybody practiced, but Romeo, Romeo was out um, because of health and safety protocols. So that's not, he was cleared to, cleared to play. Um, but then um, I don't know what that means over the next few days and how that will look, but he did not practice today. We got word at about 10 AM that he wasn't going to be able to practice. And uh, I would guess that he will not travel with us. And, and but just, just to clarify, cause you said he's clear to practice when, when he's through that, is, do you expect him to like fully be able to participate or is there still kind of a ramp up period for him in terms of what he's going to be able to do? He would have been able to play tomorrow. Brian, Rob. Um, you know, knowing you're going to have Romeo back whenever he is cleared, just to have, I'm not sure when you have had just a full team to practice and obviously not this year, but like how nice is it to have this time both today and then obviously the next couple of days to just, you know, kind of regroup heading into the second half of a close to full strength. Well, we're not full, right? Because of the Romeo thing. Um, it looked like we were going to be. I, I even said it on my radio interview this morning, which I immediately regretted because that just opened up something else to happen, right? Um, but uh, these three practices that we'll have today, um, Friday and Saturday, you know, it'll be the last stretch of time you're really able to practice with this schedule being what it is. So everything else we'll have to do the way that we've kind of done it here in the last two months with regard to, um, you know, a lot of individual work, a lot of group work and a lot of film walkthrough type preparation. So yeah, these practices are um, that you get a chance to get are important. I wish we had an extra day before we played, but uh, I thought our guys had a good bounce in their step today and good energy. And um, so tomorrow night will be a great um, litmus test to see kind of where we stand. Cause I think they're, I think they are, um, you know, clearly, um, you know, team that, um, is going to be very, very difficult for teams to beat. John Corrales. Brad, you mentioned earlier today about not overtaxing Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. Obviously they had a little extra activity participating in the all-star game. Were they limited at all in practice today? And is there any sort of uh, minutes kind of limit that you're going to try and put on them now that there's maybe some more help off the bench? Well, I'm sure you've seen, you saw how taxing the all-star game looked at times, right? I wouldn't call that quite taxing. Um, but uh, I think sometimes that's what all 30 minute or 25 minute games aren't equal. Um, I do think that, uh, you know, today we, we scrimmaged at the very end and um, those guys didn't participate, but that was more so that everyone else gets a chance to do that. They're in good shape now. Um, it was, you know, for the most part, they've gotten a good week where, you know, with the exception of playing 25 minutes or whatever in the all-star game, that's, that's what they've done. And so I think that they, they feel pretty good. My, my, my concern was about the games building up through that first half. And now, yeah, you know, the hope is that we have more bodies available as the second half goes along and that you can choose opportunities to take, but there's nothing that will be um, that we're concerned about with those guys here in the near future. Was there a specific minutes restriction for Marcus? Yeah, there'll be, he'll be low for a while. I don't, I mean, I don't know what a while means, but at least a couple of games. Adam, I haven't one. talked to I haven't talked to the training staff. I, I know Marcus just said he's playing. I, I assume he might, but um, I haven't talked to the training staff about any of that yet or him. So we'll talk about that tonight and come up with a game plan. Adam, uh, kind of along those lines, how did Marcus look today? And, and he's you know obviously was pretty antsy to get back and back on the court. And what kind of uh, jolt even just having him back when? you look out there and see his emotional leadership in addition to the things he obviously does in the court. He's a good player. 
you know, I think that's, you know, he's a guy that knows how to play, plays both ends of the court, makes us better on both ends of the court. So obviously that's going to help a ton. And um, that said, I think that we had some guys step up and do some good things in his absence, especially in those last four games. So when he went down, knowing the density of the schedule, knowing that Kimball wasn't going to play the second night of back-to-backs, knowing the, the toll that that could potentially take on others, um, I thought our guys came out of it okay at the very end of that. But there's no doubt we're better with him. Keith Smith. Hi, Brad. Now that we're into the second half of the schedule, do you anticipate Kemba playing some back-to-backs, or is that going to be something that still continues to be managed all the way through? I haven't even thought about it, Keith, because I, I guess I've just gone under the impression that he won't be. But that has not been a discussion that we've had anytime soon. So maybe, maybe that changes in May. I don't know. Bob Schrott. Thanks, Brandon. Hi, Coach. Uh, yeah, Coach, uh, the guys ahead of me alluded to it, but tonight's, so, uh, excuse me, tomorrow night is kind of a, well, it's, it's an important game. And obviously you've got a lot of these minutes, things going on. How complicated is it? Because it, like I said, it is, to me, it, it's arguably a very important game, a regular season game. Thank you. Well, I think number one is it's worth one, right? It's worth one of 72 and um, I think what it does is we get a great opportunity to see, you know, um, where they are after the trade, you know, in person, um, you know, how we can play and hopefully be better than we were, you know, in our exhibition game or our regular season game against them when they, you know, they blew our doors off twice. So they're, they're an outstanding team. Um, I think every game is difficult to coach. There's a lot of different things you're trying to manage in that very short window of a game, but also considering the length of the season. And I just think that, um, you know, this will be no different. Obviously, you know, if Marcus is um, able to play, then he'll be really limited. So that's um, actually not that difficult. But I think that, you know, how it impacts others in their minutes will be the, you know, one of the things that we'll have to, to um, navigate. Dave Borges. Hey, Brad, just switching gears for a second here. Uh, obviously, March Madness is uh, about to kick off next week of uh, conference tournaments this week, of course. Um, just like to know, in general, your kind of your memories of the, you know, those two years, particularly uh, as, a, as a UConn writer, 20, uh, 2011. And I know, you know the championship game might be on something you always look back on, but how much do you think about that game? And have you ever sort of talked to Kemba about that particular game as well? Kimba wears a Yukon uh, jacket every day. So I can't get away from it would be my answer to you about that. He's got that, you know, he doesn't really want to talk about the game either. It wasn't exactly a, you know, a work of art by either team, but, um, but uh, he definitely wants to smirk and um, show that, you know, he won. He reminds me of that even in his own little way, just by wearing that jacket every day. No, it's, I mean, March Madness is why I got into coaching, you know, and, and, you know, and, and I, I wanted to be a part of a team. I wanted to compete, um, but I never got to play in the tournament at the division three level, or obviously the big tournament, the division one level. And I think that was a big tipping point for my own like inspiration to go into coaching. Cause I wanted to be a part of that event. And so I'm glad that kids are going to get a chance to participate in it. I think that they're being creative in how they're going to do it. Um, I love the fact that it's in Indiana. To me, that's where it should be. And um, I'm excited that, you know, for my friends that are going to get a chance to compete and participate in it. Got a chance to watch a lot of the games here. The nice part about having the all-star break over the start of conference tournaments is I get to tune in to some of, you know, people I know at smaller schools that I haven't seen in a while and just kind of enjoy the angst that they're dealing with on the sidelines and know that no matter how that game ends, I'm going to sleep just fine. But uh, the uh, it's a special event. All right. We're wrapping up right there. Thanks. Coach. Thank you.